Do you want to increase your situational awareness by detecting things like license plate readers and flock cameras, but you're not quite ready to go down the rabbit hole of microcontroller development? This video is for you. This is the minimum tool chain to get you up and running on a We Spy Flock U firmware to do just that. We're not going to go into details on how to set the tools up to do anything else. We're just going to get you up and running. The first step is we're going to install Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is free software, so we'll just head over to the website. We'll download that. Then once that's downloaded, we'll kick that off. I'll change a couple settings here, but you don't need to change anything from default. So we're just going to really quickly click through and watch that install process. One thing to keep in mind is I will speed up the slow and boring parts. Uh, this will take longer on your machine, but this should hopefully give you those key points to know that you're on the right trail. Just sit back, relax, and trust the process. So VS Code is an overall development tool. We're going to be focusing on the microcontroller, so we're going to have to go into the Extension Manager, and we're going to search for Platform I.O., and then once we find it, we're going to install that, and that's what's going to help us actually deploy this to the ESP32. So once we find that IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, we're going to say we trust that publisher, and go ahead and install that, and again, just let this process run. This did take a fairly long time. Again, it's sped up for effect here. Once installed, it should look something like we're about to see here in a second. So the next step in this is to go ahead and get our Python toolchain set up. I will deviate from Kernel Panic's instructions here. I think Anaconda is pretty convenient. This is the first time I discovered that you had to actually sign in for that. We'll, we'll process that later. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. But we'll install Anaconda, and that'll give us a way to manage separate uh, Python environments, as well as give us a pretty nice little tool chain for doing data science and uh, scientific computing, which is why I, I kind of like it. So we'll download that Anaconda installer, and then we'll run this. Again, for our purposes here, we don't really need to deviate from the defaults. Uh, I will change a couple things uh, just for my environment, but you don't need to worry about that at all. So we'll just go with the defaults, uh, install this, and follow along. While this is installing it, will give us a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the OUI Spy and the FlockU firmware. It's important to note that this is entirely passive, uh, receive only. Uh, we're not interfering or creating hazardous signals in any way. You always want to be aware of your local regulations. Uh, they do vary. Some of them are rather, rather peculiar, uh, but this is pretty benign as far as those things go. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for broadcast indications over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with uh, either known MAC addresses or other signatures that match those. Uh, but there's nothing that we're doing to, to interfere. This is simply observing the environment and taking note. I will also note that I live in a relatively rural area, and there seems to be a few um, systems that don't have these signatures that are probably going over cellular direct. So just keep that in mind as well. It's the old adage, the absence of proof isn't necessarily the proof of absence. Once we're done here and you're up and running, I do encourage you to go back and look at Jupyter Labs and Jupyter Notebook. It's a pretty nice environment that you've just installed for yourself. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to avoid using the Git client, and we're just going to go to the website for FlockU. We're going to click on the code button there and then download as zip. Once that's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and copy that, make a couple directories, put it where we want it to go, and then we'll pick up over there and extract that zip. And then we'll make a note of where the platform IO project file is. Uh, we'll open that just to look, and then we'll reset all that here in just a second. So with that open, what we do is we're going to click down to that little alien head, and we're going to import the folder. Uh, we're going to find where we just put this. We're going to discard the changes we just had from looking at it. Uh, and then we'll say that we trust this publisher. Now we've got our workspace set up. You'll notice that little blue dot under there in the progress bar it goes kind of crazy. This is some more movie magic. This will take a relatively long time. We sped it up for you here. Again, as long as it's moving, it's just trusted. Uh, stick with us. We'll get there. Now, as that finishes up, we will want to go ahead and install the Git client. I did want to avoid us having to use it directly, uh, but the software will use it to fulfill some of these dependencies. Uh, Git is just sort of this tool that helps you do version management and check in and check out code. Uh, if you contribute to an open source project, you should be pretty familiar with it. 
Um, we don't really have to worry about it so much here, except that the software does need it to pull some of the dependencies when we go to build this software and deploy it. So we're gonna go over to the Git website. We'll download that installer. And then once that installer is downloaded, we'll just go ahead and kick that off. Again, uh, we can change things here, but for our purposes, the defaults work fine. Uh, we're not really planning on having to interact with it a bunch ourselves. We just want the software to be there and the dependencies to be met. So we'll just go through on the defaults. And then once it's installed, we should be good to go and platform IO will be able to fulfill its own needs. After that, we're going to move on to installing some of the stuff that we need in our Python environment for the web interface to work better. Uh, even though I did deviate and I used the Anaconda environment, just to stick with the instructions for now, we're going to pip install the requirement list that ships with the firmware. Uh, and it will go through here. Again, this will take a little bit of time as it has to download and install those packages. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and restart Visual Studio Code. We'll import the folder again. And as it opens that project, it should be a lot quicker this time because all the dependencies should already be downloaded. And then we'll get a nice clean environment. Once we're in this clean environment, we're going to go ahead and follow on the instructions on the, the Git repo. And we're going to uh, issue the command to run and deploy to the target. Uh, now, I left this in. I did this a couple times. So I ran this originally in the CLI, the command line interface for Visual Studio versus the platform IO command line interface. Uh, and that's kind of important as we'll see here. The PIO command is not known to the overall PowerShell interface, but it is known to that platform IO. So we'll rerun that again, uh, having launched the terminal and the command line interface from within platform IO. And this time we'll see that it, it will work. Um, so this is another thing that we'll speed up a little bit. Uh, we'll go off and compile all of these. We're able to see the dependencies because we installed Git and this should work pretty well. Once that's done, we'll want to set up the web interface. We'll do this through using the Anaconda prompt. So we'll want to make sure to go to that Anaconda, either through the Anaconda Navigator or as we just did here, search for the Anaconda prompt and run that. That'll launch our own Python environment. Uh, you'll see that in the command line by that prefix base that we saw. Then we'll follow the instructions in the Git repo and we'll just go ahead and python flocku.py and that's going to launch our local web server. With that running, it'll give us the path to it. It's just the local host at port 5000. We'll put that in the address bar in our web browser, and here we go. We'll select our device in the sniffer pull down there and connect, and then we'll see in the serial terminal here that it's cycling through all the Wi-Fi channels and Bluetooth, looking for those cameras that we're trying to detect. So. Hopefully, in retrospect, that was all pretty easy and you're set up and good to go. If you got stuck, let me know. I'll try and help as best I can. But for now, thanks for watching.